Moore. Here. Braddock. Here. Scott. Here. Capron. Here. Gretchen. Here. Can we stand for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First up is an interview for the Effective Fiscal Public Policy Committee, Joseph Donovan. Joseph, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to serve on the committee. Hi, my name is Joseph Donovan. Um, I'm a 33-year, I guess, resident of Sioux City. Uh, worked professionally down at the 185th Refueling Wing as a financial manager, have for the last 20 years. Um, have a background in public policy. I studied public policy at Drake University undergraduate and then graduated from Briarcliff with a graduate degree in management. Uh, I feel like it would be a, a nice opportunity uh, to be able to serve on this committee. I feel like I could provide some good uh, inputs and also uh, understand, gain, gain some complexion on the strategic view of Sioux City and the way things are handled. Um, be a privilege to serve if you'd like to have me along. I'm willing to entertain any questions that you might have. So you've been in the Guard for 20 years? Uh, active duty for four and then Guard for 16, correct. And, and you were in Sioux City for 33, so you went in the Guard or the military when you are like 13 then? Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cl closer to 40 than 30. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have five vacancies, so it looks real good. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, I'm glad you applied. I, I had conversations with Mr. Storm, and he stated that this was a committee that I could uh, probably do some good. Good. So yeah, I'd be happy I totally to serve. Agree. Good I, for you. I, I'm on All that right. policy. I, I'm on I, that I noted policy. that. I, I appreciate that. You bet. Right on. Okay, well, thank you. you. We thank appreciate you. you applying. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. We'll go to the consent agenda, which is items 3 through 16D. You can consider them to pass unanimously unless a separate roll call vote is asked for by a council member. If you want to speak on these items, or under the citizen concerns, either one, please come up and state your name and address as we read the item. Citizen concerns will be at the end of the agenda. We will announce it at that time. I move the consent agenda. Second. Number three is a reading of the City Council minutes of May 13th and 16th, 2016. Four is correction. I have a correction on okay. um, 7A of the regular meeting minutes. Um, it shows that I abstained, but mayor, the mayor abstained on that item. I show you abstaining, and it was the mayor? Okay. I believe so. It was on DA Davis' mm -hmm. item. Thank you for looking out that stuff for me, Mr. Moore. Sorry about that. I'll correct it. <laughs> well, after last week, I read the minutes to see what ha actually happened. <laughs> How'd that work out for you? <laughs> Let's just keep rolling today now. <laughs> Let's don't get started here. Four is a motion acknowledging the Board of Adjustment Actions of May 10th, 2016. Five is a resolution authorizing request for release of funds and certification of environmental review pursuant to the regulations of the United States Department of HUD in conjunction with the Community Development Block, block Grant Program. Six is a resolution adopting plan specifications form a contract estimated cost for the Bridgeport West sewer improvements Section B sewer and manhole rehabilitation project and 2016 annual manhole rehabilitation project. I'm assuming that the Bridgeport is more than manholes. It's actually a bunch of sewer pipe that's got to be redone in that. And when will these plans be ready? Because well, I know the city engineer, the plans are, are completed in the Bridgeport area, the, the sewer lining plans. There are some manholes that need to be rehabbed either um, you know, we're raising some, adding some uh, cone sections to them to get them in the ditch lines that are in the ditch lines. But this is in support of the, the Seaboard Triumph food. Be ready. Well, it should be I'm ready for tomorrow. I want to make sure that we have plenty of time to bid because this is, you're bidding this uh, June 14th, right? Right. Okay, so you do have the plans ready to go. Usually we have them the next day or at least by the time we have that advertised on Saturday for everybody. Okay. All right. Seven's resolution inviting proposals for the sale of land in the combined Central Sioux City's CBD urban renewal area announcing the 10th 
to accept the proposal of Cornerstone World Outreach and set, setting a hearing portion of the property lying west of 23 West 3rd Street. Go ahead, gentlemen. Hi there. Kerry Gordon, 1631 South Paxton. Aaron Rochester, uh, 1304 46th Street. Mr. Mayor, we think we've landed on a good spot to put up the Haddock Memorial. With your permission, we'd like to purchase the property. Uh, today we're setting a hearing, and that's for 30 days because it's in the urban renewal area. So that's the first step. And then after 30 days, I didn't know if there was a second, third reading that can be waived. The only issue that we're looking at is uh, Haddock's anniversary of his death was on August 3rd, and we were hoping to have a ribbon cutting on that, that point. And of course, there's a lot of dirt work and, and the footings and things to be put in, in place. Uh, so the 30 days would start as of today? Correct. The hearing is actually scheduled. It'll come back on June 27th. Okay. Uh, for the public hearing with the intent to accept um, your proposal. Is, that, it, is that three readings at that point, or no. is it just one? No, it's just, it's, then it will be authorizing a deed at that point. Okay, great. Excellent. Moving. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mayor, mm -hmm. I need to abstain on that item, conflict of interest. H and actions relating to street closures. A is a resolution temporarily closing a portion of 41st Street. Central Street, Floyd Boulevard, and Leeds Park Commons, June 9th through the 13th for Leeds Community Days. B is a resolution temporarily closing a portion of Jefferson Street and Floyd Boulevard on June 9th for the Leeds Community Days Parade. Got that on your calendar, Mr. Moore? I June do, in 9th. fact. Okay. C is a resolution temporarily closing a portion of Lake Larson Park Road on June 11, 2016 for the Cardinal Honor Run Fundraiser. <coughs> D is a resolution temporary closing a portion of 4th Street on June 15th for the Big Brother, Big Sister, Over the Edge Fundraiser. Which if anyone's got their checkbook today. If anybody wants to throw him off the roof, now's your chance to do it. <laughs> is that right? That's right. It's going to cost you a little bit, that's all. <laughs> E is a resolution temporarily closing a portion of 4th Street on June 15th for the Iowa Association of Business and Industry 2016 Annual Conference Chairman's Dinner. F is a resolution temporarily closing various streets July 1st through the 3rd for the Saturday in the Park Festival. Niner actions relating to bonds. A is a resolution directing the sale of $23,290,000 of GO Bond Series 2016A. I just wanted to make sure everybody got the results of the sale I left. Well, go ahead and tell the media, even though we're irresponsible big spenders, how the rates came in today. They came in very well. Oh. Oh, well, they're uh, not here to hear it, though. <laughs> so we have uh, three, three sales today. Um, the first was for uh, $23.29 million. The winning bid went to Morgan Stanley with a... Recommending council accept that bid of 1.6% uh, true interest cost. Nice. And the taxable series 2016B are 8.545 million. Uh, the rate was 1.9%. And C was the advance refunding uh, for 4.235 million, true interest cost of 1.16%. Uh, so with the refunding, the current refunding and advanced refunding, the uh, savings were about 520000 So is this because our bond rating is, is so good? Um, yeah, we have a, a good reputation in the market. Um, we have a, a substantial amount of bidders every year that come back to you know, work. B is a resolution directing a sale of $8,545,000 of the GEO bonds, Series 2016B. C is a resolution directing sale of $4,395,000 of the GO refunding bonds, Series 2016C. E, or, uh, D is a resolution authorizing the redemption of outstanding GO bonds, Series 2006. E is a resolution authorizing the redemption of outstanding GO bonds, Series 2007A. 
APA is a resolution authorizing the redemption of outstanding geo bond, geo urban renewal bonds, series 2007B. G is a resolution authorizing the redemption of the outstanding geo bonds taxable series 2007C. 10 are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Electric Innovations for City Hall security camera system. Is there a bond on that job? I think there is. I I'm going to abstain on A. B is a resolution approving the contract with Mark Albanicia Sink for the North Lewis Boulevard Water Main Phase 2 project. C is a resolution awarding a contract to dependable drain and plumbing for the wastewater treatment asset renewal section A manhole rehabilitation project. D is a resolution rejecting all bids received for the wastewater treatment asset renewal section B check valve insulation project and ordering the return of all bid bonds. E is a resolution approving a subordination agreement with Quicken Loans in connection with the remediation of the lead based paint at 3808 Glen Avenue. F is a resolution approving a contract to American Fence Company for the fence improvement project at the Sioux Gateway Airport. 11 are actions relating to personnel. A is a resolution approving the personnel manual and salary schedule for police supervisory employees. B is a resolution adopting and approving the personnel manual and salary schedule for the fire supervisory employees. I would really like to vote no on this, I'll vote aye, but in the future, I think when you have a change in the job description that that ought to be a, a part and parcel separate and should be handled separately rather than through because if you vote no, it looks like I'm voting no on the whole thing, which would not be the case. And I know you separated fire out, but but if we're going to upgrade positions, then I think it's important that those upgrades be handled so that there's a public disclosure of that, which not not that it's being hidden, but I just in, I'm very uncomfortable doing it the way we do. That's why every other one of those that have come forward have been a, a separate item to be handled that way. So I, and I know what your intentions were and I'm, it's not like it's the end of the world, but C is a resolution adopting approving the personnel manual and salary schedule for PATS executive and council appointed employees. 12 reactions authorizing the issuance of checks. A is a resolution approving a change orders number one and two and authorizing final payment for DA Davis in connection with the roof work at the Southeast Morningside Lift Station, I'd like to abstain. B is a resolution approving a settlement and payment of the Santos tort claim. Purchasing number 13A, resolution awarding a purchase order to Transit Sales International for two 40-foot heavy-duty ADA compliant buses for the transit system. B is a resolution amending the purchase order with I-State truck for, by removing light, line item number two, alternate one, trade-in of the city unit number 28. 14 are applications for beer and liquor license. See the liquor for cigarette, tobacco, nicotine, vapor permits. See the list come forward if you have any questions. 15 are applications for beer and liquor license. See the list come forward if you have any questions. 16 are receipt of minutes. See the list and come forward if you have any questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Passes 5-0 other than the abstentions. 17 is a hearing and, and a motion to obtain public comments regarding the neighborhood stabilization program. Anyone to be heard? Move 17. Second. Passes 5-0. 18 is a hearing and resolution assessing a civil penalty of $1,500 or a suspension of 30 days against Sam's Mini Mart, 923 West 7th, for violation of the Iowa cig cigarette laws. Is it up to the council, the either or, or is it up to the vendor, either or? Well, it's up to the council, but uh, we've taken requests from the vendors. Well, 
this is like number three. Second violation Six. in two years. Second in two years. All right. I thought it was his third, but all right, I'll move that. Second. I do think that we have to watch that when it's a constant deal, even if it's watch where the ownership may be the same in other places that we need to make sure that we are watching. I guess as we pass this, they can choose if we pass it as written, right? Correct. Um, this one, I think why you're remembering it is the first violation was January 29th of this year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We didn't learn very well, and I hope they learn. And I would, that's I would, on their license. I know that, but it doesn't matter to me if it's, you know, if it's a, a pattern is all I'm saying. I would hope that two in less than five months that the police department would go visit with them and make sure they understand the expectation is all. Hey, Bob, I have a question going back to on 17 on the comments regarding the neighborhood stabilization program. Um, it said that we have uh, 18,366 bucks left and we're going to do monthly installments to, to three relocated tenants through February of 218. What does that mean? Um, uh, Jill Wanderscheid, Neighborhood Services Manager. Um, it is tied to the federal requirements. We did um, three of the homes that we demolished had um, tenants, rental tenants inside. And so um, per federal um, requirements, we are um, required to give them monthly um, stipends for um, living, for having to relocate out of their rental unit at that time. So it's a federal requirement tied to the grant. So we've been doing that, I think, since 2013. And that will end in 2018. Okay, I get that, but the, th are the three tenants that are left, we're, we're taking care of them until 2018? Is that? Yeah, that I, is. Isn't that right? Yep, yeah, that's the federal requirement for five years after you relocate a rental. What if you run out of money? Um, we've kept that money separate, um, so that's the only funding we have left for um, NSP. They do let us keep that small amount of the total grant for the next, for five years after we're done to pay for those relocation payments. Okay, so. Are you making monthly payments for them to live someplace? Is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And like when does, obviously it'll quit when the money's over with, but how'd it work to begin with? So. Like, I mean, if, when you re relocate somebody, it's not a guarantee that you're going to pay for them forever. Sounds like five years. Yeah, five yeah, years. Well, that's probably a long time. Yeah. Forever. And when we do, we do take that into account when we look at, um, what structures we're going to demolish and um we did demolish quite a few and those three were the only ones that had um tenants in them at that time so it'd be smart for a tenant to stick around until demo comes is that what you're not anymore i guess yeah we don't, this is a yeah this is a <laughs> well, stimulus here. package funding source so this is yeah. the only one ones that we have so okay thank you mm -hmm. 19 is a hearing and resolution I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We had to vote on that run on 18. We're voting on it. 18. Yeah. Passes 5-0. 19 is a hearing resolution approving plan specification form of contract. S made a cost for reconstruction of taxiway A North Connector project at the Sioux Gateway Airport. I'll move that. Second. Bob, would you prepare a letter? I don't care if we all sign it, but I think we need to send a letter to the 185th thanking them for their support to securing funding for this. I'd like to have all of us sign it too. I think that's would be no, appropriate. That's fine. Passes five. The motion for second reading. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kevin Riley. I live at 1833 South Maple. I was here last week at the same meeting. Um, I came by myself and stood up. And today I would like to have show you what I've done since. Um, this morning I took a couple mini editorials out of the Sioux City Journal. 
Um, I won't read them in the whole entirety, but the only things that have risen are taxes, water, and garbage. Seniors and hardworking people on low wages can't afford it. Steve Cottrell of Sioux City, um, another one. I wish I could vote myself a raise to cover those increases, but then we citizens have to live within our means. Um, Ed Hoffman, Sioux City Journal. And how do we do that? Is by spending less at businesses, going out to dinner, et cetera. We have to watch and control our budgets in that way. I have since been passing around a petition and I'm not alone today. I'm not a person that spoke, I have uh, 117 people that have signed my petition. Um, a lot which have written in comments, which I won't read, but I just, um, I wanna continue this quest and I'm just, uh, hopefully more people will stand behind me and speak out. Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody move it? I'll move it. Second. I'm glad you brought those forward to us. Uh, but I, I, I don't know what the altern <clears throat> alternatives would be. I don't want to do anything that's going to be detrimental to the capital improvement projects that we need to make in this community. That's the difficulty I'm having with it. But I'm glad you pointed out the number of signatures you have. Um, and if I had a different solution after what I've been through, I'd sure propose it. I, I think, well, don't raise the rates and start cutting out the improvements. But I don't think that's going to be, I, I don't think that's a good answer for the long term for the community. Again, I think we need to look at what's going CIP. to fix the problem in the long term. And I, I have to agree with Dan. Um, I, you know, some of these decisions up here are tough, and it's nothing that we want to do, but we have to, and we have to do it to, to make Sioux City go forward. <laughs> we got to be progressive, otherwise we, we're going to be in a big hole, and it's not going to be pretty when it comes tax time. Um, everybody out there has to understand that we pay the same thing that everybody else does out there, and we, I'm not crazy about my water rates going up. Um, but I'm gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna suck it up here and we're gonna do the right thing because we want Sioux City to move forward. So, um, totally understand. Um, we, we're between a rock and a hard spot and it's not fun to have to make this decision, but it's something that has to be done. And I think that's the big challenge uh, for me is the city has to start repaying the relocation costs of the utilities next fiscal year, but actually this calendar year in the fall. And without the water increase, there won't be money to pay for the debt that the city is obligated to pay, as well as... Um, Give me your operating budget. There could be, but as Councilman Moore pointed out, it would end up causing us to go back and take a look at capital projects that we would no longer be able to do uh, so that we could uh, take care of the uh, debt the city uh, will need to pay back to IDOT. So it is something that the council would prefer not to do, but without doing that, I don't know how we meet our debts. I don't know how we continue to make improvements in the infrastructure uh, in the city and, and other projects. So um, it's fairly small in as much as uh, 227 a month the first year, 239 the second, and 259, or 257 rather, the third. So. I think the total was $86 over a three-year period. 
and that will help us keep on track and to continue to make improvements. So uh, that's the reason I've chosen to go ahead and support the water rate increase. Anyone else, Mayor, to be heard? Is that, is that it? It doesn't look like it. Passes three to two. Uh, Scott and Raddick vote no. Before the final reading, Donna, what, what, how many, I don't know the term, how we sell, it's not gallons, but cubic feet. feet. How many cubic feet is your projection, sh projection showing to be sold outside of Seaboard next year? I didn't do it based on consumption. I did it based on billing cycles, based on the revenue we collected. But I can go back and get you what it what we've had for that. Well, but here's my problem is that we've had an extremely, so you based on last year's. I, I based it on where we were at the beginning of the agenda. When I put the agenda item together, I went and calculated where we were through the year, the number of weeks we had, the number of billing cycles, and just project, projected it for 52 weeks. Okay, but it all is about number of cubic feet used. Yes, correct. it's all about consumption. So we had an unseasonably last year, and that would be part of this time frame that you're talking about. We had an uncharacteristically wet summer last year. That's correct. Okay. So when you base that upon, you base your numbers going forward on that unseasonably wet season, if we were somehow, it doesn't appear to be today, but I'm confident that um, somewhere in a book I read it says we're going to have good weather and bad weather. Not everybody reads it that way, but it does say that somewhere. And sometimes days we're going to have wet days and in a seven-year period, and some years we're going to have dry. History has shown that time and time again. And so if you were to use a five-year average of cubic feet sold, I'm just curious where that would put those rates. I, I will calculate for next week. What I've got in there right now is similar to what we had for revenue collected in 14, not for 15. It is within 14's ratios. Mm -hmm. But I will give you what consumption would be based on the average and what the revenue would be projected from that. Thank you. And that'd be in two weeks. That'd be what? Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. No meeting Monday. Really? Memorial weekend. Memorial Day. You're right, it is. All right. 21 are recommendations of planning and zoning. Hearing an ordinance vacating a portion of First Street adjacent to 101 Virginia Street, PNZ recommends approval. This item came before us at our last meeting, and uh, uh, it was voted on unanimously as part of a project, uh, 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 downtown project that's taking place, and vacation is needed on this site. So uh, it was 6 0, and there was no one who spoke in opposition. I'll move it. Second. That's the way I cut across to go to coffee late in the afternoon, so. There's a deed restriction, so you can keep cutting. You can keep right on doing it. We'll see. <laughs> I'll abstain on this item for conflict of interest. You'd have plenty to give for this uh, over the edge deal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Passes 401. <laughs> I'm going to be up there at the top of that building with you, Mr. Raddick. <laughs> Anybody opposed to the waiving the statutory rule? No. I'll move it. Second. Raddick? Aye. Scott? Aye. Capron? Aye. Brecken? Aye. Moore? Abstain. I'll move second and third. Second.
Is this your only item on your agenda? This is it. Yeah, uh, this is it. I gotta start going out drumming up business for us. <laughs> We're busy. We're plenty busy. <laughs> you know. One more vote. Did you get mine? I can't see that. But it must have been you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Passes 401. Mr. Moore abstained again. 22 is the hearing and resolution on the demolition of 925 South Alice Street authorizing such order to demolish. Said structure was deferred from April 21st, 2016. I'll move that. Second. Uh, staff would leave recommendation as demolition. We have heard from a couple of sources, but uh, nothing as of late. Uh, immediately after follow up the meeting, we did have a couple of people call in and get information on it, but um, nothing at this point. Nothing's been started, you said? No, nothing further. That's why we deferred it. That was so that it could be sold. Somebody thought maybe they could come forward and purchase it. Well, this was the one that was yes. sold. This is one of the one of a few that were for that purpose. Okay, thank you. Yes. Who was the person that represented this property last? Was it the son or something? Yeah, David. Yeah, the son. And he's on the deed, as we have it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yes, vote is to. Demolish. 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 Okay. Passes forward to one. Mr. Raddick votes no. 23 is a hearing resolution on demolition of 1705 West 4th Street, authorizing such order to demolish said structure referred from April 21st, 2016. A little different story on this one. Um, we have a gentleman here, Mike Salmon, um, has purchased that property. Um, they were in the process of transferring the deed. Um, uh, Mr. Rehan has been informed of that and the paperwork is going to him. I have seen the purchase agreement. Um, they would like to get a, if possible, and I'm not sure if the resolution can reflect that, but a 90 day stay of demolition in their name, they are prepared to do the $10,000 bond requirement. They've done several other homes in Sioux City and are quite familiar with the requirements. When can they have the paperwork done? Mike is here. He can show you the paperwork, I would imagine, within the next it's quick claim deed. Mike Solman, uh, 4311 Stone Park Boulevard. I can uh, get this paperwork done probably. I, I can get it notarized tomorrow and uh, filed down downstairs or so across the street. At least two weeks, right? So how about we just defer it for two weeks and then his name's on the property and then we're not. Can't defer again though, can we? You can only yeah, defer, you can defer once. as many times as you want. Well, yeah, you can defer again, yes. You can only do the extension once. Or you can just. Is the resolution, can the resolution be put into his name at this I'm time? I'm looking at the resolution right now. Um, or, del or delete the item. Can't yeah, we? you can delete the item and You're saying put it on the you agenda need 90 days. He would, yeah, he would do the 90 days with a $10,000 bond required. Yeah. Yes. So if we delete the item, can you? No? No, if we delete the item, then we then we then start, we start process over. all over again. It, if, if things go bad, then we would have to start a new red tag, okay, start a new I, process. I'm supporting what he wants to do. How do I get that in the form of a, an the amendment? The easiest, easiest way is going to be another deferral. Yeah, let's, I'll move to defer it for two weeks to, what is the date again? What's the two weeks? Second? June 6th. June 6th. Yes. What? That's enough time for him to have the paperwork in his name, so then we can give him a 90 day extension. Day with Bob. We can't give him a 90 day right now because he's not the owner, uh, the property owner. All right, I'll second that. Thank you. And we're deferring two weeks? <clears throat> yes. yes. How long is it going to take you to have it done? Six. Don't you dare say a week. No. <laughs> I can move fast, but I don't think I can move that fast. I can have the property done within. There, there's a considerable amount of work here in yeah, pretty much is. all facets, electrical, plumbing, mechanical, structural. Um, and that's one of the reasons why the triplets had such a hard time selling it. Sure. Um, if we gave you an extra 30 days deferral so we don't have to do an extra. That'll work. You think you could get it done? No, it won't get done in 30 days. No, no, we're, well, probably, give... we're probably looking at a couple months to get it done completely. Okay. Well, we'll just keep it as is and then yeah. we'll come up on yeah. it too. Two weeks from now, so yeah, I, I I could probably attempt the thirty days, but it'd be cutting it pretty no. close. All right. All right. Thank you. I'll call the vote on that deferral. Scott. Aye. Capron. Aye. 
Aye. Moore? Aye. Braddock? Aye. 24 is a hearing and resolution on demolition of 1400 Douglas Street authorizing said order to demolish said structure. Deferred from April 21st, 2016. Uh, the week immediately following the hearing, uh, I did hear from the owner's, uh, owner's son uh, wanting to talk and set up time and then uh, never heard back again since that time period. So at this point, uh, the demolition uh, recommendation stands. I'll move it. Second. This is the one that has historic significance. Yes, sir. Not to you, I understand, but to others in the community. <laughs> Bob's here to address that. Um, well, there's not much we can do, unfortunately, but th this, this is one where it would be nice if we had some program, which we don't have the money for, but if we were able to secure some instead of spending it on other projects like rent subsidies for five years or something like that, that you could try to negotiate a deal where you would actually buy this and and do a city mothball on it until a developer maybe came forward, that only because of the historic significance, not for any other reason, but go ahead. Yeah, Bob Kocher, 3839 Jones and I chair the Historic Preservation Commission and spoke the last time on this that, as Mayor Scott says, it's part of the Rose Hill District and is a contributing piece of property. And so if there was a way to try to save that home, it would be ideal. But I think there's an understanding that, that there's safety issues. There's nothing much you can do. But what you said, Bob, is, you know, if there's something we can do to look for other factors that really does help because we keep taking things down that district and pretty soon we won't have one. It'll take a while, but that'll that's what's going to happen to that district. So that's the comments. Thank you. Well, I'm on board with a program like that if it's legal and if it takes care of the liability and you can get it for, what would you do, get the property for $1? That wouldn't be a condemnation of any sort? We've, we've looked into this a couple of different times and tried to get some feet underneath it to get it moving forward. One of the biggest issues in Crossroads that we come to each time is the, is the property owner not relinquishing that. As soon as they feel that there's some kind of interest in it, typically they have more resistance in selling the property. And that's been the biggest issue is getting deed to the property. A different owner, you may have different luck to... <coughs> Absolutely. I mean, it, every owner's got their own mind and their own opinions on what they want to do or how they want to conduct business. And uh, it's just been unfortunate that, you know, history is... Because maybe these guys will realize they were in over their head or something, I, you know. There is a process under state code for cities and counties to go in and acquire red tag properties. Um, we've, uh, with previous councils, visited this several times. The problem is we've never had any funding set aside. We can acquire them basically for a dollar, but there's never been any funding or any program set up to where we would be able to make those repairs and who would be in charge of those repairs and what the depth of those repairs are. So there, there is a tool that's available. I'm not aware of it being used statewide uh, currently at all. Um, it is being used in some cities, I can tell you that. They're, they're, they're mothballing homes in, uh, I think, Waterloo right now, if I'm not mistaken. I think Dubuque was in the, an area that did that as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you're talking about more than mothballing. You're talking about making the repairs. What they're doing in some of these communities is mothballing them to get a developer on board. And, and there's a way to do that that still maintains the integrity of the structure. Right on this one. You know, in Western Iowa Tech, in the past, I had met with, and they have a construction class. They would, they would actually be willing to partner with us if we could cover some of the costs and materials. I don't know. But we would also have to be willing to work within their time frame, which includes class schedules and not a very quick turnaround to getting it done. Okay, so here's my question. You have an owner for this building, for this building. So he's got to give up his ownership first before he can do anything. Yes. Well, that's, okay. that's where you start. If you okay, don't have so, that, you don't have anything. So. Okay, so what's going to happen is if we decide that we're going to demo, 
then it, that will be assessed against him, which I can't not imagine that he would want to have, have that uh, demo cost on, you know, that he'd have to pay, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Correct? Is that how it works? Absolutely. So I would think in his best interest, he would want to give it up if we could get into a situation like that. We can explore that option if that's the council's direction. You, Bob, do you think you can find a developer if we somehow salvage this and has some funding available? I think it'd be possible to research if we can find some money. Who's going to accept responsibility for continuing to make this property safe? The owner's not stepping up, so now it becomes the city's responsibility to continue to secure and make sure this property is safe. We, we start accepting a certain amount of liability the more we push this off. We have liability out there every day, Daryl. Yes, we do. I mean, we have liability out there every day on a lot worse liability than worrying about a plywooded up house that we can send one of those guys up in a blue uniform a couple times a week to make sure that it's still secure and things like that as long as it's on their route. But I'm going to move we defer this for two weeks. We already have a motion, though. I'm sorry. I'm okay with that. Well, I'll withdraw my second. If that's proper. You made the yeah. motion. Yeah, I think I'm going to move here. that we defer for two weeks then and that you explore with our community development department. I'm sure they can do their very best to see where they might be able to have some funding if, it, if they thought this were an important project and work with the historic preservation quite a bit on this in the next two weeks, see if we can't come up with something. Well, this could, do we have the 50,000 for the phase two investor? Mm. Yeah, we have had one unit that's in progress right now and it's nearing its end. Um, that obviously took some funds. Now we'll have some more funds, obviously July 1st with the $50,000 again. This being a rental property, um, I can't see as large as this home is ever becoming a single family dwelling again. I hope well, not, never... because that would defeat the purpose of yeah. historically preserving it. Because it was set up as a, a multi-unit right, right. to begin with. And, uh, you know, on a, on a commercial property like that, where it's a first structure, the phase two program is the fund, the, the company will have to pay that back within a year. Yeah. Or when the tag is... That's within 10 years. No, that's on a single family owner-occupied dwelling. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember. So basically, why they didn't you'd give them a basically a zero percent interest loan for one year construction which, loan is about what it amount to. Which that was kind of the the purpose was because if you went to a bank to get a loan mm -hmm. on a red tag property, you can't get one. Yes. That's why. Typically, you cannot unless you have other assets to to. This need new wiring. It needs cleaned up. It's not a hundred percent. The electrical is not a hundred percent condemned, but I would say that. 50% of it needs cleaned up, yes. There's been a lot of updates throughout the years on this, uh, mechanical systems included. Unfortunately, the mechanical systems are now shot because there was zero maintenance on them to the point where they weren't even functioning. They were so plugged up. Those are the units that are in the attic space. I'll second the motion to defer. Justin, you'll be able to find out, though, the mechanics of acquiring <coughs> property under that statute. I know which one you're referring to, but I have not seen that put into play either. It's been a while since I've even looked at it, but I, I think that'll be enough time for us to come up with a plan uh, and recommend to council in two weeks on how we want to move forward. And it may not work. Who knows? On the deferral, Scott? Aye. Capron? Aye. Gerken? Aye. Moore? Aye. Braddock? Aye. 25 is a hearing resolution on demolition of 901 to 13 Nebraska Street A. 14 unit apartment building located at 513 9th Street, authorizing such order to demolish that structure. Uh, I met today with the owner, Michael Gregg. Uh, he is here tonight to speak on behalf of this property and present his plan for uh, moving forward here. Michael Gregg, 1309 Summit Street, Sioux City. Uh, we have been trying to get some estimates on plumbing work, electrical work, um, and a fire sprinkler system. Uh, a lot of contractors in town are very busy. We have had, I think, three electricians come out and look at it. We've gotten two estimates. Um, one of them is quite reasonable, $38,000. The other one was a lot more than that. Um, plumbing estimates, we've had plumbers look at it. We haven't had any, any uh, estimates given to us on that yet. And fire sprinkler, there seems to be one company here in town that does that. 
but the guy never returns phone calls. He's returned one phone call and he's never gotten back to us as far as getting an estimate. Uh, we did contact uh, a company in Omaha and they said they were gonna be, give us an estimate this week and we haven't heard from them yet. So um, we did go through the units today. Uh, I think that there is a lot of work that, there's definitely a lot of work that needs to be done, but it's work that we have done on our own. Uh, in terms of redoing walls and uh, flooring and things like that. Um, once we can get the contracted work done, then I think we could we could move forward with doing the other work. Um, I think this property is worth saving. Uh, it definitely is showing its age. It's 116 years old. Um, and the re part of the reason we're here at this point is that uh, the heating system, there was a single boiler that was 35 years old that finally failed and we replaced that with smaller boilers for the other buildings that are on the property this one we were having problems with the uh, condensate lines and the and the steam lines failing so we decided to look into alternatives for that heat um, but it's the fact that we didn't have any heat in certain units that put us in this position so uh, but I think I think we can save it I think we should be given the opportunity to save it. Uh, I think a vacant lot is not really the most attractive feature of a neighborhood. And um, you also would forfeit, I think, a decent amount of property tax revenue if you knock it down. Um, the assessor has tried on two separate occasions to assess that at, at twice the value that it is right now. And the only reason he didn't is we said the front building, 14 units are not usable right now. If we put those back into operation, I could see him trying to assess it at what he did before, which is over $600,000. The difference between what it's assessed at now and that is probably $10,000 a year in property tax revenue. Over the next 10 years, it's $100,000. Can, so, can I ask why you haven't been here before the 30th day? 30? Pardon me? Can I ask why you haven't seen Daryl before I did have a meeting with Brooke, and she was she were immediately after the hearing we had a meeting, and she was uh, I gave her the directions of what staff requirements we're looking for, and that's one of the reasons Michael's here today to help present what they've been able to get collected to date. So, I did speak to Daryl over a month ago um, regarding this. Yeah. yeah. So I don't I don't live locally. Um, I have a full time job somewhere else. So. Yeah, I understand that. As, as do I, but I respond to the city when they need me to respond to them. And you know, it, it amazes me. It takes a long time to get to, get to this point, to get to the demo, right? Six yeah. months at least. At least. And, and it would seem to me that within the six months, you had to know that there was a problem with your with your property. I do know that. Yeah. So why? How come we wait till the, you know? the 12th hour here, the 11th hour, to try to figure something out. To me, if you if you want this property and you want it done and taken care of, you should have been working on this way long before six months ago. Because you're not going to get your money out of it until you start ma you know, making it worth, worth your while. I just uh -huh. don't understand that. I, I don't know why it has to get to demo before you decide that you want to do something. <laughs> I think something should have been done way, way before here. Should never be here in the first place. But that's my opinion. It, it, looking at, um, if, uh, if we talked about boarding up the property and making it safe and secure and keeping a, a regimented uh, uh, cleanup schedule around there, because that is one area that does collect trash in those arcoves and everything else in that neighborhood, unfortunately. Um, staff would support a deferral if you wanted to to get a lot more time for these. Um, uh, opportunity to get more estimates and a, more of a financial plan in place um, they have to be able to pay for this. I think he's got a realistic uh, mm -hmm. number as far as the total repairs are concerned. I think it's realistic that he's what he's got in his mind that he needs to come up with for this project. Um, so staff would uh, would support a deferral, say, to the next uh, placard hearing. So my 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 next question here is: With all these, we always ask for financials. Is he able to do that? I think what what that have ten thousand dollar bond. At this time, I I, don't, I can't speak for Mr. Greg at this time, but I think that's all the conversation we had. That's part of the plan and during this time period 
um, to collect not only the estimates of repairs so that we can show council what's moving forward, but also to collect those financial means. He has a budget of, he, he feels that his budget should be around $100,000, and I think that's probably a pretty close number. At this time, we have about $30,000 in cash, and the other money would come through over the next few months through operation of our other rental units and through the sale of uh, a couple of our other, other rental properties. And what's your recommendation, Daryl? Uh, my recommendation at this point, uh, based on the, on the meeting today, would be to defer this for any action until the July placard hearing. July which one? July placard hearing, which would be the third Thursday of July. I think it's like the 21st, if I'm not mistaken. It is the 21st, yes. I'll move the deferral to July 21st. Second. I'm okay with all that. If you show us that you're, that you're going to get, you know, get everything in, in, in a process by July. But after that, then I'm done. I'm just saying. Well, if I show you a plan in July, and that plan is that it's going to take a year to do all this work, would you be okay with that? Why would it take a year? This, it's a big build. It's a 14-unit building. We're not talking about a fourplex or a duplex. It's a big building, and there's a lot of work to be done. So, I mean, I, if, if it was six months and I knew that I had to sell two properties and get all the contracted work done and then do all the other finish work in six months, I don't think it could be done. I mean, one of the th aspects of these properties is, since they're old, and given the location that it's in, uh, I can't just dump half a million dollars into it and put granite countertops in and high-end finishes because most, probably at least half the population of Sioux City is, would not rent in this location, no matter how nice they made it. There's a, you know, a full-time homeless shelter across the street. So I can make it nice and decent, but um, you know, I, I, I have to do a fair amount of the work myself because of the economics of the situation. So but that's fair. I understand that. That's fair enough. You know, as long as I see progress. I mean, you know, we've been told this time and time again, and you know, they they just screw around and don't get hardly anything done. You know, then you know, th then we start feeling bad because well, they they have put money into it now. You know, now they're going to lose all that money. So are we going to let them go longer just because they they got some money invested in it? And, you know, so you know, I I understand. I understand the position you guys are in. Um, you don't want a building that doesn't look very good that has garbage around it. I mean, the fact is that the homeless shelter having closed a few days or a few weeks ago, those homeless people have not just dispersed out into the universe. A lot of them are still hanging around the neighborhood. And we have had, since that place closed, we've had a lot more problems with break-ins. We do need to work harder to secure the building against the you know people breaking in. And since there aren't any tenants there, so they're not the ones throwing the garbage around. It's the people who are hanging around um, with really no else, nowhere else to go that are doing this. And, you know, we will do our best to keep the garbage cleaned up, to keep the property secure. I, I think we everybody's okay. I don't I think we've wasted, not wasted, but I think we understand where we're at. But I hope you understand that don't, don't come back in three months and not have anything done up there. I'm just telling you that. Have some progress. Show that you're really trying hard to get it going. All right? We will we'll definitely do that. I mean, if you give yeah, us the opportunity, second, we'll do correct? it. Correct. Yeah. Call the roll or how are we voting? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Downtown Partners presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Reagan Cody with Downtown Partners, Sioux City. Um, I, every time I say this is going to be my shortest presentation, you end up asking questions, so I'm not going to jinx it. I'm just going to keep going. Um, Downtown Partners update for May of this month. Um, again, here's our board of directors, if you want to put that up on the screens or if you see it in front of you. 
Um, this month, Mar May always marks the year or time of year where our ballots go through our membership. We get rid of, not rid of, we add a third to the board. So um, Terry Glade and Ryan Avery are currently the two members who will reapply for another third year term. Um, and this year we're also going to add a Sioux City Go board member. So Chris Jackson is on the ballot this year to join our board and so we get a good connection with the Sioux City Go group. Uh, we think that's a good thing, the things that we've been hearing lately to connect with that energy and hopefully get that connection made uh, more strongly. That's a, our great, financials, that's a great idea. Yeah. I, they've been really helpful and I think it it's is. great to relay the information with them. Um, the financial piece to this is we're kind of coming to the end. July 1 is the end of our fiscal year. This is spent today to 72% and that's of April 30th. So we have three months to go and that is when a large amount of our expenses come through. So we're putting it pretty close to budget. We're talking a couple hundred dollars by the end of June is where how close we'll be. So just to give you an idea of how that gets spent to date. I decided this was the easiest way to go through the last couple months is the faces you've seen. Um, we've gone through since your last update when we met jointly in February, we've had Roger Brooks, we've had Brad Siegel, and we've had locally, obviously you've seen me more than enough. Um, Roger Brooks, I would like to point out, is more of a tourism. I, th I hope you've, you've all gathered that by now, but I still get a lot of calls on what the differences are. So I thought this was better made clear. And then Brad Siegel in the center is a downtown management consultant, specifically for our board, and then myself, which would be more Sioux City based and local. So putting these things together, I've basically listed out, and I honestly just have like two slides after this, so it is fairly short, but I wanted to focus on the areas. You'll see three colors, green obviously being more green space, blue is business plan investment, and orange is more of an engagement or a city portal piece. So under, for example, Roger Brooks, you'll see from a tourism perspective, Look at the critical mass of your businesses. How often can I be in one area and for how long? How many businesses are there that I can visit? After 5 p.m., tourists sometimes come in the weekdays when it's after 5 o'clock. What can we do to that respect? And wayfinding, tourism perspective. Go to the center and over towards our area or the downtown management. They look at placemaking, how to get most out of your rebounders, out of your own young professionals, but those really invested in seeing things grow in downtown. So engagement, your nightlife, your startups, your entrepreneurship, housing, is it walkable, is it livable? That management um, maintenance green space piece came up in all three. So I wanted to make sure that I pointed that out today too, because recently over the weekend, we had another article about the upkeep and different maintenance pieces in Sioux City. And I think in downtown, that's really apparent. You get the wind, you get the trash, moving around, we are going to be committed over the next couple, you know, with this next calendar year budget of helping the city out in some way of focusing in on downtown, whether it be a contractor that comes into downtown once a week, goes through, trims trees, gets rid of trash, pulls weeds, but really we also need our property owners to be engaged in taking care of their properties. So hopefully over the next year, you know, as our maintenance crew would go out, they can put something on their properties that says, hey, we've been here, we've noticed this. Maybe that's the way to go about kind of picking up and making sure things look more consistent and upkept. We'll work on that, but we know it's a piece that, that has everybody's attention right now. Um, when I put these all together, I thought this visual might work as well. Take all those words from the slide I just gave and then put it in three areas of where we'll be focusing and you'll see that reflected in our budget. The orange, again, community, for lack of a better term for these overlying areas. Um, strengthen and unify the community within downtown. Um, give the rebounders a place for engagement. There's a lot of people who are moving back to Sioux City of a younger age sometimes, and there's also you know, the empty nesters that really wanna be involved in city development. How can we strengthen that unified voice and get them more involved? So we would be more of a portal. People would come in for business and startup. Economy is to attract new investment. Let's make it pretty, but yet let's establish the business support system that small business, entrepreneurship, startups, that they all need to incentivize innovation in Sioux City and make downtown be the place where they can effectively do that. And then environment, the placemaking improvements, the streetscaping, the roadways. Um, this is different people and so many different pieces. Um, a good example to give to you is the parklets. I think that's a great example. You know, we're gonna back off of that for this next year so that we can focus more on these placemaking portals. For example, between um, the 4th and Jackson building and the Riviera Theater. We have people living in condos in the 4th and Jackson. Let's make that some green space so that as you're walking through, it's more walkable and more livable. Same thing between United Center and 
the movie theater, you know, those spaces and those pockets of development and also making the business owners maybe put more stuff out front, make it show that they're invested in their business and being down here before we invest the funds to make sure that it all looks like that and do something new until we can maintain what we've got. The black bar at the bottom just shows you where we are now. So this isn't far from where we've been. We have four task forces, communication, economic development, and then livability and transportation. So really these three areas are just combining four into three mm -hmm. more effectively. So that's where our budget's gonna come through. And all of these pieces you're gonna see in July. Only say that because Roger Brooks, his report's not due till July 1. Brad Siegel, his report won't come until our board meeting at the end of June. So all of these things will be taking place in July. As much as I would like to tell you it's this, this, this right now, we don't have the report and we haven't gotten down into the numbers that deeply yet until I can share them with you. So um, Dan and Keith have been great representing the board and so they are working with us diligently on getting that done. Um, but July is when you'll see a lot of that coming into play. In June, we'll be probably doing more of a community-wide um, outreach, so to speak, in explaining these three areas and inviting anyone in Siouxland. We had a lot of people respond to the survey that were from Sioux City, not necessarily in downtown, that want to be involved. So give them the opportunity to be involved. Excuse my voice. Um, and lastly, the trolley's coming back. Thought you'd want to know. You'll get questions. Um, it starts on June 3rd. It'll run June through the end of the year. Fridays and Saturdays throughout the summer, but then after September, it'll just go to Saturday nights through the winter to get people around downtown. So that is all I have. Surprise. Questions, please. Uh, yeah, I, I, I want to um, address, Cherie Sandy had a nice article in the paper Sunday, and she was talking about how to make our, com our community a showpiece, or a show place, I should say. And yeah, you know, she's made, she made some good points. Um, uh, I think all of us out, out there should be kind of responsible for the litter that you throw. You shouldn't be throwing litter, you know. Um, everybody wants to put it on the city, how we have to, you know, we want the city beautiful, but they want us to do it. Well, it's not us, it's everybody. So I, I think that um, everybody should keep in mind that when you see something on the, on the uh, outside litter, pick it up. You know, take care of what you have. You know, you, you like to have your homes nice. Let's how about having that city nice? You know, let's present it. Let's make it good. Um, also, Cerise has to also understand that we're, it's it's just we're in May, so you know it's kind of hard to, um, you know, get in the pavilion and all them places looking nice because it's just starting to to plant and to get things going. So, um, but I just feel that the I. I I think for the most part, the people need to be responsible for, for themselves also. We should not have to babysit everybody out there. So, um, and I'm sure that um, you had mentioned something about maybe um, hiring a contractor for like once a month going around, you know, looking at stuff, picking things up. Um, downtown, we want beautiful. Well, people downtown, help yourselves make it beautiful. Nothing wrong with going out and picking up a little bit. So um, we can't do it all. That's where I'm at. And flowers will be out this month, by the way. Yes, and Just flowers so will be out know. this month. We yes. So. <laughs> it's that time of year. You, you, you got to give a little bit of time yet. And look at the weather. You know, we've had wind and rain, and um, it's kind of hard to get some things done, you know, as soon as you want them done. So, Morningside um, merchants pay 125 bucks a piece to put flowers in their pots. Just thought I'd throw that out. We don't get any help from the city. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Just thought I'd throw that out today. You know, well, we forget well, that they, there are other pay for flowers. There are other commercial <laughs> corridors out there that. Well, they pay for it. They just pay through it through. Yeah, right. I just get to manage putting them, them in. I guarantee you, with some of the businesses pay into this bid, they could get some pretty fantastic flowers. <laughs> they also have uh, facade programs downtown that we don't have in Peters Park either. So Reagan. Yes. <laughs> Now that you're on a roll, oh, <laughs> um, you, know, you gave a great yeah. presentation. One two way streets, have you? This one? Ouch. Yes, they have. Ouch, Dan. <laughs> no, anytime you I don't can think get. We have, let me put it to you this way. We have not given up on the two way streets. No, and we won't. It's just a matter of where we put our energy. I mean, where we put our money and where we put our energy. If, if it's not something that the city's looking towards doing, we fully, completely, 110% support it. Slowing traffic in downtown is the key to making it more walkable. And how we best do that is really up to 
to city leaders and how we can do that. But he, here's what I'm looking at for two-way streets. I, I honestly don't recall getting a, a firm figure for what it was going to cost to convert. Give um, me that CIP book. Maybe you'll remember, but I don't have remember having a discussion about it. I don't remember having a discussion about just limiting, could we limit the two-way street to, a, to just right. a certain area? Yeah, I recall Douglas was 180, I believe, and then the other two were around two. Is that right? Two point three or something to that effect. I must have been. I think it's more money. I think it was more money than that. I just don't yeah, remember the numbers. I don't remember. <laughs> Hi, Glenn. <laughs> oh, good. My I will guy. tell you that, the, <laughs> and if you're following Des Moines, it is the downtown merchants that are leading and businesses that are leading the charge. Which, you know, it's not this council's job to do that. I'm going to lecture you a little today because I've had a reasonably good day today, so I just will finish. It's your job, if you want it done, to lobby to get that done, because this council will take a lot of heat when that has, you already have, and if, if you guys as business owners down there don't understand it, then why in the world would I vote for it without some cover from you as business owners in the downtown? Sure. And, and that, Des Moines is doing it, and Des Moines having success with it, and Des Moines doing it because they do know that it increases the retail and, and that type of activity in, down, in a downtown. You, you, we don't have retail on Fifth Street. Why? Because the traffic's too fast. We have some, I should, but by and large, it's difficult. We have a lot more on Fourth Street. Why? Because you've slowed the traffic down and you've made it go two ways. I agree. We've had examples of where it went very well. And in all fairness, our stakeholders did push to get that study done. Um, what was it, five years ago? It was some time ago to get the original two-way done. We were at the table for most everything. You should have emails and pieces that strongly support getting that two-way piece done, which got the study done. Now, from As that at point... At least five years ago, because I believe Hobart was mayor. So. No, I was. No, no we... Bob was here. We got the study done, but then we got the numbers, and then this big yeah. Yeah. number shock came out, and everybody kind of stepped back. Well, so it just took council. that one yeah, number, that which was, was everything the under the sun. Conference. That was oh, yeah. filling area ways. That was oh, curb, gutter yeah. repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. under the sun. That was just two but years you can ago. limit. Yeah, that was yeah two years like ago. In 2014, that they, the 18 million. Yeah. yeah. Or the 20 million dollar number. Was, 10 million it was, was 10 million for everything. Well, that was and their, that's insane. That was their deal. <laughs> well, that was their deal, but I just want to have a discussion about it because we. I know. thank you for that. Yes, it's well, something that we would strongly, strongly support. And if well, we need to do another campaign to push farther, let enough. me know. Bob, it's not in the current CIP. It was pulled. No, that's Mr. I was looking because Mr. Moore said, "Well, we didn't take it out," and I said, "Yes, we took it completely out." It's completely out. Yeah, no, I, I, I was saying I don't recall the number. It was like two hundred eighty-nine thousand on one, seven hundred eighty to do another. Yeah, I can't what recall. We can was. find that, but um, oh, it, it was a million dollars. We not to do Douglas. There you go. And right. what we had was the bare bones only. Exactly. To reduce the cost. Right. Yeah. But we can get that for you if we can find it right now. Well, I know downtown partners with Keith and I serving on the board. I know they're not shy. At revisiting that or looking at the two-way okay. again and and I think the mayor is somewhat accurate that we need to have you lobby for that if that's the case or maybe it's just a general maybe it's just gonna die I don't know well I hope not but yes if there's something we can do absolutely. I, I would certainly entertain and I and I know the mayor's right that they the project is gone now right from, <laughs> from, from Douglas. entertain drafting one for the upcoming the next FY18 year, a capital project for two-way streets to have that discussion again. It wouldn't be that um, much. <laughs> again, I, I would agree with the mayor that the region, and not only them, but commercial businesses yeah. mm -hmm. in the downtown area too. And, and depending upon their involvement, it's something that could happen. But I, I thought it was a lot more than $2 million, but I... To change fourth and fifth, yeah. it was what we had a million is what it showed five hundred thousand for 
Three million total if you do everything under that deal. Three total? Three, three well, and a half. And un, unprogrammed last, well, going into this current fiscal year, it was, there was two and a half million dollars, so we only, we only had a million dollars programmed in 17 and 18. So we still needed two and a half to accomplish That got it. Douglas Street done, and that got part of Fifth Street done. Yep. Yep. I had a hard time focusing after he said big stake. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be working with Glenn more closely again for the next couple months. Thank Thanks. You. <laughs> Thanks, right, Reagan. Thank you. Thank you. I've got all sorts of fun ideas for downtown partners, too. So. <laughs> bring it up at uh, Thursday's meeting. Citizen concerns, are there anybody in the audience that wants to be heard? <coughs> no, please. Hello. Hello. Well, come to the microphone, state your name and address, please. My name is supposed to be Daniel Tudor as assigned at birth. That is not my actual name, but for the record, you can go ahead and use that. I would like to say that bicycle rider lives matter, as well as homeless lives matter, as well as radical theories matter. That would be me. And just today, I was released from jail against my will. Y'all police department took and forced Sue Stray, the bicycle, who is a person. Granted, you do not have to be human to be a person. I'm tired of y'all challenging us. We tried to move around the city. Y'all in the news talked about, we have a million dollars to give to this baseball stadium, which benefits almost nobody. Homeless lives matter. And that other person who came up here talking about all oh, the homeless people, they're criminals. It's not a crime to be homeless. We attempt to be tools, and then we can't keep up at your pace to make this fake money so that y'all can continue to hold on to stolen land that produces your fake money so that we can be in your system. We are not your tools. We are not here to work for you. Y'all don't want to criminalize homelessness, but yet if it's raining outside. Where is this homeless people supposed to go? We're just supposed to find some imaginary box to live in. We need to eat, we need to sleep. We're tired of being pushed to the side. Y'all don't have sidewalks on every single road. You got cars running us over, spitting on us, killing us. When y'all cars kill us, y'all police choose to not arrest them. When cars push us bicycles to the side, bust us, beat us, y'all choose to not arrest them. Yet, when a pedestrian goes and not uses a a crosswalk, y'all be like, oh, the police come out of nowhere, be like, oh, you're not using a crosswalk. Or when a bicyclist doesn't use a turn signal or has a busted light because they can't afford to fix their tire or afford to get brakes or afford any of that stuff, just trying to not get hit, hit get killed. The police be like, oh, okay, so now we're going to enforce the law. Be like, you didn't come to a complete stop at a stop sign. Or, oh, you were too far in the middle of the road. Or petty things like that. Poor people like me, myself, we are not completely broke. But when we get completely broke, like when the police stole a whole $2.50 from me today, when I was with the jail. Stop right there. I'm stopping on that one. You got about a minute to go here, okay? You got three minutes. The police, you, you make an accusation against our police department. That, yes. No, I, so, I'm talking now. I'm talking. Does this kind of my time? Hey, my, hey, my chambers. I'm talking. Okay, it's hot. All right. You don't accuse people of stealing money. If you do, take it to the county attorney. You're not going to get a free get out of jail card from me when you accuse our police department of stealing money. That doesn't work in my chambers. Now, go ahead. You got a minute to go. Okay, so first off, they stole $2.50 from me. Facts. And it's on the record. I went into there. They took and beat me down on the street. Me and Sue traded by school. Put our face in the pavement, cause us pain, bruises on my arms, wrists, bruises on my wrists. Um, call me out my name, call me a boy if I'm just a boy. I'm a boy and a girl. Call, don't try to confirm my gender. And then went and put mail on the paper. Took two whole dollars and 50 cents. Every poor person okay, needs every- 30 seconds to go. Okay. Every single dollar. And that whole two dollars and 50 cents on that credit card I was given, I went in there with cash, nickels, quarters. Not no credit card. I shouldn't have to use no ATM to get my money back. 
stole my plunger, can't even unclog the toilet. I'm not even actually living in a house. I'm just currently there by the kindness of someone's kindness. You got 15 so seconds. Try to use so a toilet, a plunger. Criminal police need to go to jail, and y'all need to check yourself and recognize bicycle lives and homeless people matter, and we will not be silent. Okay, time's up. Thank you. Silent. Appreciate it. Y'all, basic and average, I will not be silent. Yeah, you do not. I'm tired of having to deal with y'all. You okay? can leave the chamber now quietly, or this officer will escort you out. Your choice. I don't really care. Right officer, would you escort him out of our chamber, please? You don't own this chamber. Out. Thank you, officer. Don't touch me. I'm leaving on my own. That's right. Y'all have a home to fly. So, man, you can't start rocking in this building. Thank you very much, officer. All right. Anyone else want to be heard after that today? <clears throat> oh, I feel much better now. I tell All right, you. <clears throat> Mr. Gretkin. Um, I guess in keeping somewhat with that theme, uh, I would. <laughs> I would. Oh, I would agree. I would agree with the gentleman that homeless people do matter. And what I wanted to share was last Tuesday I attended. Um, the uh, Siouxland Street Project team meeting hosted by SHIP. Uh, Matt Oman is the director and uh, uh, the police department uh, is uh, involved, Captain uh, Lisa Clays, and a number of, for, for the third meeting since last fall, and I know that I think everybody here has been to at least one meeting. Um, they, they got a, an excellent turnout, 50, 60 people showed up for the meeting and uh, with the help of uh, faculty from the University of Iowa and a graduate student from uh, the School of Social Work, they, there are half a dozen committees now that this Siouxland Street Project uh, has actively uh, engaged in trying to find solutions to help homeless. And they developed a questionnaire, 10 volunteers were recruited and they interviewed 100 individuals. Uh, all of the individuals they interviewed said that they spent a great deal of time on the street and in public places, either by choice or because they had nowhere else to go. So throughout the meeting, there were really basically two central themes. Uh, one was more affordable housing, uh, which I think this gentleman made reference to, as well as the people with the uh, items regarding the uh, placarded uh, homes. Uh, there's a need for more affordable housing and in the need for uh, a detox facility. Often they say they end up where they're at because there's nowhere for them to lay their head down, nobody who helps them and assists them. So uh, again, I know that uh, what I did was make a copy of the uh, information they handed out and the work the committees are doing and made sure that all the members of the council got a copy of it. And, I wanted to acknowledge all of the city employees who are actively involved, and they are, and it's my hope that the city can continue to be uh, an active participant in helping to uh, develop um, not only affordable housing, but have a hand in uh, uh, working towards uh, a uh, detox center in, in Sioux City, and I think that would go a long ways to helping. So. Uh, the next meeting is scheduled for September. You'll get notified, and, and hopefully there'll be some progress made uh, in the meantime to uh, help uh, solve these issues that will make the city a better community. So I just wanted to share that a little bit. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, I got an email today from a person uh, about a traffic light by Perkins. Evidently, the traffic out there is uh, kind of dangerous, it sounds like. And I don't travel out that far, out that way anyway. It's been she, dangerous for at least 10 years, but... Well, we're going to talk about it again today, by God. Finally, right? Okay, so she, she said she was coming in from Highway 20 going west so. when a lady pulled out in front of her uh, by Perkins. Um, if she hadn't been able to s swerve into the right lane, she would have broadsided her. And she said, she said that she... I may and, and uh, Bob Padmore, I need your help on this with the water rate, water rates. There's a senior discount on the garbage. Garbage, yeah. 
and that's a flat discount. Yes, it is. It's given monthly. Okay, and then the then the water usage and tying in with the sewer sewer rates, we look at the winter con yeah. consumption only. Water water is billed based on actual usage. Sewer is uh, billed based on your usage over the three months of the winter. We call it the winter quarter, so it's the it's traditionally the three lowest months of sewer usage, um, and then your uh, during the summer, then you're not charged for an addition anything above what your winter quarter would be. So that's been well thought out and adopted by prior councils. Yes, mm -hmm. over the years. Okay, I appreciate that. And then I wanted to also point out that we had a Morningside Avenue reconstruction project meeting last week, and the staff really did a, a great job of presenting the issues to the residents on the avenue and how that would impact them. And I think those kind of meetings are, are very, uh, especially when they're timely, uh, they're very good to have and everyone can uh, air their concerns and their differences. So I want to thank the staff for, um, for having such a good public meeting on that. And then, uh, I don't know if I should do this or not, but I want to, so I will, I guess. But I, I just want to recognize that a week from today is Memorial Day, and that's our observation for uh, a lot of us to remember those that uh, went before us. And I just have some quotes that just really stuck with me over the years that I'd like to share with the public um, to point out Memorial Day, that it's more than just a day off, and it's more than just... Um, a day for us to have picnics and celebrations, although that's very important to have with family. Um, President Kennedy, uh, quote, the cost of freedom is always high, but Americans have always paid it. And one path we shall never choose, and that is the path of surrender or submission. And by the way, some of these quotes not only fit uh, what a great country we have, but, uh, but honestly what a great state we have with Iowa and what actually a great community, what a great city we have in Sioux City, Iowa. I'm really proud to be a citizen of Sioux City and I'm really proud to be serving on the council. Um, Henry Ford is quoted as saying, what's right about America is that although we have a mess of problems, we have great capacity, intellect and resources to do something about them. I think that fits for our staff and for our citizens as well. Um, Aaron Kilborn uh, was quoted as saying, the dead soldier's silence sings our national anthem. I think that's really a powerful one. President Eisenhower, there's nothing wrong with America that the faith, love of freedom, intelligence, and energy of her citizens cannot cure. And I think that's true of Sioux City, Iowa. Just a couple more, Mayor, if I may. Um, William Harvard, the greatest glory of a freeborn people and lastly, another quote by uh, President Kennedy, let every nation know whether it wishes us well or ill that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. I hope everyone has a very safe and uh, uh, great Memorial Day a week from today. Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Good job. I didn't know uh, you would quote Kennedy being of the other party, so I appreciate your bipartisanship today. <laughs> you know, whoever President Kennedy <coughs> and I can't remember his name, that wrote some of his uh, speeches. Oh, I know his name. Uh, yeah, wh who was it? He's very, yeah. yeah. Who, who wrote Kennedy's? Oh, they're too young. Just really, really <laughs> skilled. Just, you very, yeah. They might not know right, Kennedy. Um, <laughs> Oh, what's he wrote a book afterwards? Now those, those are just quotes I wanted to share with everyone because they they mean a lot to me. And and again, I, especially the one quote. I mean, yeah, we have a lot of issues, we have a lot of problems, but I think we do have the, Ted Sorensen. Ted Sorensen was his writer. Yeah, just a marvelous writer. But Sioux City has a lot going for it. So proud to be a part of it. Proud to be serving with all of you. Thank the you. Yep, thanks. So for Mr. Carney there uh, on our downtown striping, we had a project done a couple years back where Great Southern had expanded the exit on the west side of their lot. 
and there was a white diagonal line that was painted over with like a gray paint and that gray is pretty much all gone and now it's like a white line there again so for big events at the event center or at the hard rock people will park in that spot but it's also like the west exit of great southern bank so all right What's that? The T's and L, the, they call them. The, the, oh, the, sure. the, that's done by by parking, not by not by the striping contract that we do. We do the long line striping, but I'll get with. Yeah, because well, I just know that w when the project was done, this was like painted gray, but all the gray's pretty much gone, and you yeah, have kind of a faded. It, I think that goes back to the time when we tried grinding them off, and the grind mark showed up better than the paint did. Sure. So, <laughs> um, but no, I'll get with Monet about because. That's what would be under her contract where they do those parking, the right. hand work. Okay. And then uh, on the INA construction of the uh, stormwater inlets, uh, they're doing great work. The quality of the work is way better than the last contractor, but is there cleanup done on those afterwards? I've gone to check out a few of them. There's like uh, by the streets every now and then a few chipped up. Question. You know, pothole areas that could be filled with asphalt. Actually, they should be leaving the site in a, in a, in a good condition. So if they're, if they're damaging it, we'll get with them about it. Okay, so yeah, I just went and looked at a few of them. The, the quality of the work is way better than the previous contract. I mean, like, night and day better, but, but we'll, yeah, it's we'll, just not pretty when they leave. We'll make sure they're getting cleaned up. Thanks. I have one more question. Um, I don't know if it would be you that could answer, but um, every day I drive up 27th and Jackson, and there's a fire hydrant there with a hose on it. What's that all about? That I don't know. I'll have to find I mean, it has a hose running like... Sidewalk's closed, they say. Is it, and, and the hose runs from the corner of yeah, 27th. Yeah, so what's it doing? To, I, I, that, I can't tell either. I've seen it. That's associated with the Bryant they School project. I don't know if Brad may know more, but our utility crews yeah, installed that. It's temporary, providing temporary service to those homes on that stretch. Temporary water service? Yeah, water service. That's really? It has something to do with the, the pressure in the... Uh, that main line, but I don't know, Brad, you may know more. Yeah, Brad Pitts, water plant superintendent. With the uh, reconstruction or lining of the 30 inch uh, water main on Jones, there were some valving issues at the end of Jackson where they had to run some uh, water lines mm -hmm. just to feed a few homes in that area. That project is nearing completion. If you've seen the water running down Jackson right now, they're flushing <laughs> the 30 inch to get it ready to pass bacteria tests. I thought it was the rain, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then once they, uh, so they're getting ready to move over from Jones over to uh, Jennings Street. So that so should that be I'll, done I'll see the same thing when, when I'm- Warning ticket to stop doing that. And I hope we could get that done because we don't need that going down our storm sewer. Am I right, Mr. Utility Director? Thank you. <laughs> we have a grocery store that now has half of it as a bar at 26th and Center. How in the world did that zoning get approved? It's an old daycare. Huh? 26th and Myrtle. Well, it's between Myrtle and, yes. Yeah. But now they play loud music all hours of the night out there. They've called the police to no avail. So can somebody please... First of all, tell me how we let them get a liquor license in a residential neighborhood like that next to a school. Wait, can, can you repeat the address? So 26th and Myrtle. Okay, thank you. Jeff, you have, you know how? We were gonna mention that uh, the liquor license was granted before the zoning ordinance was amended, which put in the requirement. But how'd you get that close to a school? We had zoning ordinance, we didn't. There was not a separation distance, and I think that one actually I, went to court. I know where you're talking now. We we took that to court, and we were uh, unsuccessful. Well, no. we can take them to court for not for violating noise ordinance. People have Noise's a right to sleep the in their own house at two o'clock in the morning. Curtis they can't have that music going Curtis that loud Area outside. El What's that? The name is Carniceria El Mikoacana. Okay. Well, would you please check and see? how we're letting that happen then. Yeah, address is 2600. And 
I know everybody got an email, but why didn't, do we have the ability to do bulk mail? Why do we just not bulk mail residences when we have, rather than, it has to cost more money to go out and put a bag on a door handle, guys, than it does to bulk mail a letter. Actually, in this case, I believe we did both. Sorry. You know, we, we get criticized for not giving enough notice, <laughs> and now we're being criticized for giving over notice, so. <laughs> We're just trying to do everything we can to make sure people are aware that we're having these meetings. Once you did mail it. That's my understanding is that it was sent out bulk mail Friday. The bulk mail would have gone out the week prior. So the week of I don't know, the 10th, so maybe a week and a half ago. So we had a meeting or a, a mailer that went out to the residents on country club that will be impacted by the first two phases of the project, informing them of our upcoming public meeting that we're having Wednesday evening. When? Wednesday evening we have our public well, meeting on well, Country Club. Well, then why bother doing anything else? Well, we sent out, a, we did a door hanger so. last okay. week to inform the residents of the contractor, contact people, and the upcoming it's scheduling of it. So we kind of right. wanted to, to yeah. do additional coverage because we had heard the, the concern about the door hangers not working in the past, so we did the mailer. But we also did the, the door hanger as well. 530. I know some would disagree. Yeah. But one way of notifying is enough. Got it. Just be consistent. And I'm not being critical of people on Country Club, but they don't deserve any more of a notice than people live on Jackson Street on a 1400 block of Jackson. I'm sorry. I'm kind of old school that way. We all should be treated the same. And I think door hangers has been our... I mean, since I was here in the early 2000s, it's always been door hangers has been our, our way of doing notifications. A lot of times because with contractors, we're trying to get them out quick. And the contractor actually does the door hangers. We I understand that. Um, so it's, uh, uh, I guess, if, if you want us to go to strictly bulk mailing versus doing door hangers, that could create delays. And I don't really care. Do it however. But I think it's only fair that you do the same thing for the people at 14th and Jackson that you do for the people at Country Club Boulevard. 100% agree. Make them all Facebook friends. It's five thirty Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. yeah, at the uh, the church at forty sixth in Hamilton, the, the first congregational church. Mr. Padborn. Okay. Ladies, I move we adjourn. Second. Apron. Aye. Gherkin. Aye. Moore. Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay.